This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. So, Shkaich, everyone, for coming. The Kaltari rings on over here in Landers. It says the Avni Nezer was born, the Katzke Rebbe told him, because it was Purim and you were the only one that was learning. So he was Zaycha to this big Neshama. When everyone else is uh, off to Ben Azmanim, it's still a Kaltai from the Bismedrish, so who knows what you could uh, be Zaycha to. Now that people aren't learning, it's just that the Bismedrish is different. So I was thinking to myself, driving up here, came a little bit late, um, just to get out of Barapak this time of the day, just 24-7, it is just a huge parking lot. I'm sure if you look down from the bird's eye view, you'll just see like this, this maze. Somebody's going to say, is this, uh, you know, all the leasing companies, they kind of have the same deals at the same time. So sometimes, I remember once it was like uh, Hondas and sometimes it's Toyota Siennas. So in the Bangla colony, it's like 10 Siennas parked one at the other. All the way to two, three leasing companies are, you know, all in the Bar Park area and this local hick stops by and he comes in he wanted to speak to the owner of the dealership of the Toyota dealership I said no this is called the bungalow colony why are all these Tiana spark no so any bar park is just one big massive parking lot and it, as it gets closer to the Yumta then it's 24-7 so just to get out of bar park but then I realized that I don't know it looks like there's a lot of Yidden on the BQE all the way up here because uh, it wasn't much difference on the Gimmis Humble Street and I was just thinking sitting in traffic Right, my frustration was rising and rising. I was getting so angry and wasn't sure what I was getting angry at. And suddenly on both sides of me, you have it on the BQE, sometimes these Department of Correction buses coming by. You know what I mean? You see like the, 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 the grill on the windows and I'm saying, well, you know what, maybe it's just good to sit in traffic plane. <laughs> maybe that's okay. Maybe you just have to take who you are. But the Hashem kind of sends you messages. I always have this thing. I picked up my son early this morning in the airport. And the belt in the morning is also no picnic. So he said, go with the streets, go with the streets. I said, the streets are not better. Yeah, but at least it moves. I said, there's only, when I have a choice of coming here with the streets, or uh, coming with the, coming with the uh, highway, there's one thing that makes my decision. If I'm not finished preparing yet and I have to write, I like the streets, because then every time we stop by a red light, I could write on the highway. The problem is, even if you're only going two miles an hour, you don't stop, so you don't, you can't, uh, never mind if you have one of those GPSs that won't let you set it until you actually come to a complete stop. Anyway, when you come to a complete stop in the middle of the BQE to set your GPS destination, sometimes the tractor trailer behind you is not so happy. I don't know why. So I was saying, why, I, w- I was explaining to my son as we were like crawling on the belt this morning, I was saying, I think that in the New York City streets, you spend average 50% driving, 50% waiting for a red light. So even if you're traveling at an average speed of 30 miles an hour, which, of course, the mayor's speed limit is 25, save lives, can't talk, but let's say you're traveling at 30, okay? If you spend half the time by a red light, you're really only traveling at 15 miles per hour. Your net gain is only, you're only 15. So if on the highway you're going 20 miles per hour, you're still doing better than the city streets. Of course, factor in the, uh, the route and so on. They said, people like the streets better, because at least you move. I said, do you know what it is? I think, I think because you, you think you have control. I'll turn here, I'll turn there. And people don't like the idea you're just in a long train of cars. And at one point, there's not, you can't even weave in and out of lanes, because there's everyone on the lanes, besides the construction that's going on. I'm not sure what they're doing. They're building two bridges, three bridges, one next to the other, one going this way, one going that way. I don't know what they're doing. But I think that's why people go off on the streets, because they want to have control. You feel you can turn right in here. You just, you just have to sit there and wait for things to take their, take their uh, time. And I think that a lot of our simcha sachayim, like we were discussing before, is, hey, things are going to happen when they're going to happen. I can't push it. And if I do push it, the Gemara says in Masech, this brach is, if you push the clock, the clock pushes back. Don't push me. If I used to share this with me, if you say, okay, clock, you're in charge. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen at the time. I'll get the appointment when I get the appointment. I'll get the results when I get the results. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll get the mark. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Then the time goes a lot quicker. It says that clock is like a ganif. Why is a clock like a ganif? Because when you look at it, it walks normally. When you don't look at it, it moves. You always wonder, sitting in traffic, you're plotting, right? 
And then all of a sudden, you, you get onto a plane and you have 11 hours there at Yisrael and you're relaxed. Why? At least I am. No cell phone, nothing. And the answer is, is I think you resigned yourself. That's it. I can't make a choice in the matter. I can't get off the plane in the middle. I mean, you could, but it's not such a smart thing to do. When you resign yourself to a situation, then it's much more relaxing and you use the time productively. When you feel you have control and you want to... Uh, 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 and I think that that's the union of the Seder. The morale says that. There's a Seder in your life. It's true, sometimes you have to take the bull by the horns and move with it. But there's a Seder in your life when things are going to happen. There's a Seder in your life when you're going to get married. There's a Seder in your life when you're going to have your challenges, the uncertain moments. Sit back. Ride it out. Do you do a shtadlis to make to accelerate things? Not to be in tsar, of course. For yourself and for others, hopefully. But ride things out. So Rameel Biederman has this beautiful story. This kid comes from Yishalayim, he's a chas, and he has a list where to go to, collect money. He rings on the doorbell, the guy comes out, Another Yishalayim, nigga kid! Get a job! Work for a living! What do you want from me? Every two seconds someone rings the bell! The kid is just there with his head down. Finally, he gives him something. He walks away. So someone says to the kid, I can't believe how he yelled at you. When you told him your situation, you're all alone, you're a cousin. He says, but I see at the end, he did give you something, but I'm just amazed. How did you stand there and not answer back? How did you stand there and not run away? So the guy looks at his files. He said, he has a whole thing about where he goes. And on this address, it says... He's going to yell. He's going to scream. He's going to say, get a job. All you people are all the same. And at the end, he gives you $300. So I was very happy that he was screaming because I was scared. If he wouldn't scream at me and say all those things, then he's not going according to plan, he says. He says, I'll let him scream at me another 10 times. You know what I mean? I'll give you $3,000. So, of course, I had no problem with him screaming. So he said, imagine in our lives if we understood that we have to go through a certain amount of agmas nefesh and it leads to the bracha, as we'll soon see. So we can deal with it. It's not geschmack. It's not easy. We can deal with it. So a Gemara that I mentioned, we mentioned last week, and I was learning Daf Yaimi had it a while ago on Daf Nunhe. So the Gemara says like this, if we can just see it inside. Amalei zoynin le Rebbe Akiva. Zoynin said to Rebbe Akiva. Zoynin apparently the Mepharshim say was some type of a Roman chosh of a person, not Jewish. He said to Rebbe Akiva, Psst, keep this confidential. But Libi, my heart, the Libcha and your heart. Yada, we know the Avaidas Kaichavim last may Meshasha that there's nothing in the Avaidas Kaichav. Right? We know it's just Avaidas Zara, what is it? It's a piece of iron, a piece of metal, you bow down to it. But I don't understand something. I see people that asli they go Kimis Bari when they're they're like falling apart. They come, you know, from Lashon of Tzem at Bakr. They, they, come, they come back okay. Like things are sinking with each other. Sinking as in sink, rising, not in sink, sinking. So my timer. How could it be? Amr Lai Sir Bekiva says to him, Em shalacha marshal l'ma adavadayim. I'll give you a marshal. And he says a marshal about a bunch of, uh, somebody that was very trusted. He was so trusted. Everyone gave him money without witnesses. One person always gave him money with witnesses. One day he forgot to take witnesses. So his wife said, hey, today this guy forgot to take witnesses. Let's lie. We never got the money. He says, what? Because of that fool? I shall lose my good name. So the chain, I'm not 100% sure what the marshal and the nimshal is. It has to be studied. But he says like this. Listen to the Lashon of the Gemara. Af, the same is true for Yisurim. Yisurim means affliction, affliction, pain, sorrow. When they're sent on a person, Rahman al-Islam, mashbiyan oisan, there, there, there must be of them. They swear. Like, just like when a person is sworn in, right? A governor is sworn in. You can't leave. Let's say someone sitting here, chas v'shalma, shouldn't be, is tense about something. Worried about something. There's a level of anxiety. We're under pressure. You should know there were mashbiya, those yisurim to come, and they're told that they cannot leave only on a day. On a certain day, but like so they will not go out only on that certain day. Not only on that certain day, but exactly at a certain time. You're going to be relieved. Through someone. Perhaps through a certain medication. 
It's either or. It's not necessarily all of this. Kivan Shagi is man and lot says. And let's say the time came to leave. I want to make this perfectly clear. If you take a look at the Marsha, the Marsha says that there's no question about it, that Shuva, Tfilo, Tzedakah, Mavir, and Ezra, Yagzer. We're talking about someone who makes no effort to ask Hashem to remove the Yisur. We're talking about even if he doesn't make any effort to ask Hashem to remove the affliction, no, no tzara comes indefinitely. It's there for a certain amount of time. And the same is true in every single aspect of where it is. A woman told, uh, heard a story that someone told me about a friend of hers came to New York, and she was, it, was, it was a terrible tragedy. Her son suddenly took ill. At the same time, her, her, her daughter-in-law was expecting, and things were not going good, and she was all alone. She had no one here, and she was running from, from hospital to hospital in Manhattan, and she, she thought, a bunch of you can't do this to me. She was like collapsing, and it started pouring. On top of that, it started pouring on her. And somebody came out and said, Madam, you look like you can use an umbrella. Take it. And he walked away. And she said, okay, Hashem, thanks. She said, the umbrella did not solve my problems. But let me know the world is not hefty. Let me know that there's a cheshm. Let me know I know where I'm going. Kivan, so, so when it comes time for Yisurim, okay, let's say the person doesn't do tshuva, doesn't do tefillah. Still, Yisurim only go for a certain amount of time. Look at the history of the world. Every country had its turn with wars. Every country had its turn with natural disasters, with droughts. We don't know. Kivan Shagi as man and lot says, when the time comes for the pain to leave, so what happens? Let's say the Yisurim, the pain came to this guy, Gimple. And they were told you're going to be there for six months, three weeks, two days, four hours, six seconds. Don't ask me to repeat that. But the Yisurim, no, right? And just at that moment, this Gimple decides to go to an Avaid Zara and tries luck over there. What should we do now? He said, Avaid Zara, take away my pain. But now the, the expiration date on the pain is there. So Amru Yisurin, perhaps the Yisurin will say, hey, Dinu say, we can't leave now because everyone's going to attribute his Yeshua, his salvation, to the idol, to the Avaid Zara. So the Chayzen Vaimrim, they turn around, they say, no, 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 no. Because he didn't do what was proper. We should lose our, our shvua, our trust, our trustworthiness. We were told to stay only until a certain amount. As if they say, we could, we could really stick around longer with a good pretext, but we, it doesn't work that way. But Avani Shalem sends Yisurim for a set amount of time. And it's very, very important when a person is going through a crisis to understand this crisis has an expiration there. And an expiration hour and an expiration second. Behind with the Om Rabbi Yochanan, my dechsev, what is meant with the pasuk? The chaloim roim v'namonim rabim b'shlichasan, roim b'shlichasan v'namonim b'shvus. We don't always know when they start. All of a sudden, you realize, oh, where am I? I'm a quicksand. But they're gonna leave. They're gonna leave at a point, unless the person, like the Mashal says, chuvet tefilat tzedakah mevinas royak zayr. So this morning, I'm driving home, and for whatever reason, there, there's a wonderful, uh, you know, all sorts of organizations that give out all kinds of things before Pesach. So I go to pick something up for uh, a year in Eretz Yisrael. I had a car full of boxes and suitcases. And when I get home, I was supposed to have three people help me unload the car into my house because I had to head out from there to a speech in Philadelphia. And I wasn't in the mood of driving on the, the Jersey Turnpike full of boxes on the roof and all over the place. Tied down. And I get there, and there was some mix-up. Nobody was home. And I had to leave. And I said, I'm going to have to unload all these boxes. I'm not good at it. Like, I'm not good at physical labor. And I start schlepping the boxes, and I'm like, and, I, and whatever, I had other things pressing on me also. At that moment, there were anxious moments for whatever reason. And I said to myself, I'm, I'm going to cry. I can't do this. And then I decided like this. Every night before I go to sleep, I try, believe, neither. I try to learn 12 Mishnayas. Because if you learn 12 Mishnayas a day, you finish Shishu Sidri Mishnah a year. Now, of course I'm behind a few nights. So I decided like this. I made a cheshbon. There's about 24 boxes. I'll bring in one box, learn two mishnayis. Bring in another box, learn two mishnayis. And that's going to be my motivation to at least catch up on one night. So I take out the mishnah, and of course I bring in two boxes, and I learn the mishnah. And then I'm like, okay, have patience. I have patience to learn the mishnah. Because I'm going out to get the boxes. Then I have patience to take the boxes, and I'm going to learn the mishnah. And I'm doing great. Okay? And I kid you not. And it's taking a little bit longer, but it's like almost a game. It feels good. And I finish Mishnah number 12, box number 24, and I say I didn't count right. There's three more boxes in the car. And someone pulls in behind me. I was a little bit in someone's driveway, a friend of mine. 
and he says to me, what's up? I said to him, uh, want to help me with the boxes? He says, sure. This guy's a big giver. He picks up three boxes, walks in with them. So I said, you see? I explained to him, it was beshared to me to learn 12 mishnais. That's why the rest of the boxes, someone else carried it. Because the purpose of these boxes were the mishnais. And I, I began to think, I remember when I was moving, I said this story many times. Hey, do you remember this? I, 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 I packed the, svar, the, the svarim in big boxes. And the movers come and say, we can't pick, we can't lift this. No, we don't pack books in big boxes. I'm so sorry. I can't repack it. Now. I'm begging them. No way. I said, please, look at you try. No way. Can we push it? No way. No, I'm, gonna break, I'm breaking my back. Finally, my wife is a little bit like she's a little being a Yisera than me. She says, give him a $20 bill. No, he can't. So give him a $20 bill. I gave him a $20 bill. They put like three boxes, one on top of the other. Whoop, we out of there. <laughs> it's amazing how the Ebesh says, Schadish Koyach and someone else. No, so I said to the guy, I said, you know, you just proved to me. The purpose of these boxes were for me to learn t- the 12 Mishnais. But Raya, once I finished Mishnah number 12, you came in and brought the other three boxes. Okay? Then I found that some of the boxes are on mine, but that's a different story. That's, good. <laughs> that's my next day of learning Mishnais, right? So I said, imagine we can take our problems in life, right? You're sitting in a waiting room of a doctor, Chas Shalom, sitting wherever you are, and say, okay, the purpose of me being here is, 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 is not what I see it as. The purpose of me being here is a totally different purpose. And, and you begin to reschedule it. So of course I don't know how long it's supposed to take till they call me in. So of course this guy got ahead of me. Because I'm here for a purpose. This is why I'm here. The Ben Yada says, that, oh, and I think the Chassam Seifer says also, that sometimes that what the Satan does is when he realizes he has to leave and give the person Menucha Sanefesh, because the time is up, even if he didn't do tshuva, he'll try to orchestrate that the person is buying a Vaidazar or you're doing an Aveira at that given moment. Imagine you do an Aveira, you look at something you shouldn't look at, and poof, and your problem goes away. Hey, this works, right? Our, our, so, so what happens is the Satan will do that. He knows he has to leave, and he's upset that he has to leave. So he wants to be machshul you, and, and will send you where you're going. So the Gemara Takadarshan, the Shlokish says, May Dachsiv, Im Leitzim Hu Yalitz. You want to be a late? Who yell? It's all yours. It says, Somebody wants to come to be Matama himself. What happens? They open, up the, they open up the door. You want to be Matama yourself? We're going to open the door wide. You want to purify yourself. What does it say? The sign, I say. We're not going to open the door wide, but we'll help you. We'll help you. What does that mean? Interesting. The Degel Mach Nefraim says like this God says, I don't change. But there's Pchira. So what does Pchira mean? Pchira means that if somebody in a different school, Chas Shalom, not here, is in his dorm room late at night and you're frustrated, and you sit down to your computer and you're supposed to be studying for a test, and somebody comes and says, hey, you want to watch this? You don't want to watch it. And then you say, maybe I should watch it to let him know how bad it is. Because not he would, whatever the reason is, how the Yetzirah manipulates us. Okay? And you wind up watching it. You go, what did I do that for? So stop for a second and think. God gave me hands to be able to do it. God gave me peace of mind. You can't enjoy any type in the world unless you have a certain level of tranquility. No one that's in massive pain is enjoying taiva. No one that's, that, 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 that's, that, that just heard horrible news and is in terrible fear is enjoying taiva. So who's the one that gives us both physical and emotional strength to enjoy taiva? It's God. So Shem, what did you do to me? So he touches like this. Right? When God doesn't hide himself, that's when the Satan steps in. And we don't realize it's God who's giving us the power to do the Avera. But there's an answer. The answer is, says the Degel Machna Ephraim, stop for a moment and say, wait a second. Hashem, you're giving me the peace of mind now to technically be able to indulge in this taiva? So I should waste that taiva? Of course not. I can't do it. So I'll tell you a story. I think I say it once a year, but I think it's good to hear. We say the Agada once a year too, right? I was dealing with this kid, unfortunately, every Friday night, he would run off to Manhattan to not good places. And once I said to him like this, why he was talking to me, I don't know. I said, imagine you're about to walk in, Rahman al Salaam, to wherever you're walking into. Maybe don't imagine, but not a good place. You get on the train Friday night, you're going. It's just getting on the train Friday night, so the least of it is over there. And you're going someplace. 
I said, imagine right before you're, you're about to go in and, 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 and indulge in the worst of the worst, your, your phone rings. And it's a doctor. And the doctor says, listen, we just got the results of your test you took for your work papers. There's something suspicious. Please come by my office. He says, I didn't steal anything from your office. No, I'm not accusing you of anything. And the doctor begins to explain to him what that means, that there's something chas v'shalom suspicious in his blood test. And he chaps. Me? I'm too young to be sick. Yeah, it doesn't always work that way. What could it be? Well, you know, it could be nothing, but it could be A, B, C. Come to my office. We'll recheck. But, but, no, don't worry, there's the 10% survival rate. And, uh, you know, what does the guy say? This operation, you should know, uh, 9 out of 10 people die, but I wouldn't worry about it. He goes, why? Because the last 9 people I did it on died. So, uh, <laughs> statistically, you should be okay. You know what I mean? Uh, should be good. So let's say you got that call. So what do you think? You're going to go in now and enjoy yourself there? Knowing that next week, you're not going to enjoy yourself, right? So he says, yeah, but I never got such a call. I said, so thank God you didn't get such a call. So the God gave you, you shouldn't get such a call. So what are you using your, your peace of mind for? Anyway, he goes off. And he comes back to me. He says, I'll kill you. I said, what happened? He says, I stood there. About to go in. I said, did your phone ring? No, but every time it rang, I jumped through my skin. I was waiting to think that maybe it was a doctor call. Okay? So, l- this is how we have to view life. And the Chanami, right? So, Shaloi Echad, says the Degel Macht and Frayim, Shaloi Echad, it's not when God appears to us as one God. When Ahmad Aleinu L'chalusenu, when the Sultan tries to entice us. But look a little deeper, it's Vahak Kaddish Baruch even when you do the Aveira, it has to be God. Who gives you taiva? Who gave you a human body? Who made you a healthy person that has taiva? And if you think that it's God that's giving me the Menuchas and Efesh, well, let me, let me rethink this. Then Matzileinu Miyada. That is, in a sense, what saves you. So, Abol Atam, a Paiskhanloi, God opens the door. Abol Asayim Asayinloi. What's the difference between Paiskhanloi and Asayinloi? Paiskhanloi means you fall right through. Asayinloi means, come on in. I'm going to guide you. Say every time the Gemara says, the Gemara says uh, that this world was created with a hay, the Gemara says in Menachis, because you can fall out the bottom if you want to. If you want to come in, there's a little door on the left-hand side of the hay where you can come in, right between the leg of the hay and the top of the hay. That's a ball, a tame, a ball, a tame, I say. So it's harder to get in, right? It's easier to fall out the bottom than it is to crawl in through that little hole. So the Sefer time of the Gemara says, no, but Hashem did it that way, because when you try crawling in, he, he embraces you. When you say to yourself, I was over the worst of air in the world, my mind was in the sewer. And I'm going to learn. I'm going to Pesach. Hashem, help me. Even me? Yeah, even you. Come. And when you try to crawl in through the little opening between the leg of the hay and the top of the hay, God holds you in place. He says, I'm not making a wide open place. I'm seat belting you in. I know what it means for you to turn around and to be able to come in here. Come on in. So the Ben Yad brings an amazing story. He says that these two people were lost and their ship got shipwrecked, and they, I don't know, were holding on to a board or a beam or a tube or something. And they wound up on this island where all the Jews had just been expelled during the times of the expulsion. And they hadn't eaten in, in weeks. They said, listen, we're going to die of hunger. It's Bekoch Nefesh, we could eat. So they split up because less of a chance. And one guy says, yeah, I'll take you in for a meal. Another guy says, I'll take you in for a meal. And they both eat ham and eggs. It's kind of the not they die. One of them, on his way out, somebody calls him and says, Psst. He takes him downstairs, you know, presses the button on the suit, on the bookcase, and it turns around, and he comes on in and he says, Listen. He says, I'm a secret Jew. I saw the way you were eating that ham and eggs. He says, I'm a Murano. I'm just telling you it wasn't real ham and eggs. It's imitation. Whatever you ate was 100% kosher. He, goes, ah. he hugs him and kisses him. And he meets the other guy. And he says, uh, the other guy says, nah, the guy didn't tell him that. He ate ham and eggs, and the guy told him it was bona fide certified ham and eggs. That's what it was. No Murano, no nothing. So when they came back home, each one, they ran to the rub and said, how come he, when he ate the ham and eggs, it turned out to be glad kosher? How come when I ate it, it was ham and eggs? So the rub said to him, how careful were you in kosher in your life all the years? And it turned out that the one that actually ate the food of the Murano was, was, was my son Nevish himself, a kosher. The other one, uh, it blinked a little bit. Right? Remember the old bar, uh, butcher stores used to say bus or kosher? You're not going to remember them. Neon lines, neon signs. It was bus or kosher. So the Satmarev was walking in Bell Harbor, so the kosher was like blinking. The light was fading. So he said, in this butcher store, sometimes it is kosher, sometimes it's not kosher. You know. 
So how the, the battle that we have in our Yetzirah, that's what guides us. This is where we go. Rav Shach used to say that he had a tshuvas from Akiva Eger, which he kept with him his whole life, because at one point when he was hiding in the war, in a bombing raid, in, in, in an attic someplace, that was the only cipher that he had. And to him it was like more chashiv than anything else. There's a famous cipher, Ber Mayim Chaim. One of the great Hasidic Chastur uh, Shabbos, where they say he was a head taller on Shabbos. That's what they say. Because of Simcha Sechaim, that he, when he came to Tveria, he's buried in Tveria, and if you go in Tzvas, you, you crawl into his, uh, if you want to, crawl into the little oil underneath the ground. People go there, they sing Shabbos Miras, it's a skula, because he wrote a safer story of Shabbos. He said he was a head taller on Shabbos. He once rented an apartment from an Arab, and he came back after the mikvah, the Arab said, not you, you're someone else. They said that Shabina Rav said he wasn't a head taller on Shabbos. During the week, he was broken from the Tsar of Shechina, the Tsar of the world. On Shabbos, he just stood up, he just smiled. He was just happy. So they told him, Rebbe, you're taking away the, the moifas from it, you know, you're taking away the supernatural. He says, I know, and I'm replacing it with something which is much more difficult to do. Whippo, you're a head taller? Okay, you're a magician. To smile on Shabbos, on Yom Tev, you know you're not in the mood of smiling. Shabina Rav said, that's a bigger moifas. Think about what I'm saying. So the story goes, how was his father Zaychatim? His father's name was Shloima. That his father was not a big Talmud Chacham, and maybe not even a little Talmud Chacham. He had a distillery in some distant little village, and once he told the guy to sell the chametz for him, and the guy put it on his to-do list, and he got to the rub and said, oh, i got to sell Shloima's chametz. He said, no, I can't sell it. It's after chametz. Too bad. It's also, you know. So he came back, he says, uh, did you sell the chametz for me? He says, I tried. The rabbi was stuck up about the time or something. I don't know. So he said, that means it's chametz. So I don't know what the halachic ramifications would have been had he asked someone, but he had no one to ask. So what he did was, he told his wife, we have no choice. He lit the whole distillery. He just put it on fire, thinking that uh, maybe there's chametz in the wood. And then there's this al is gone. And what happened was, all the, 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 the cases of vodka, the wooden kegs began to break. And there's vodka flying all over the place. It says by the mun, you know, that it began to dis- like melt. And the animals would drink it from far away. And the people would check the animals, and the, the Umas Ha'ilam had a taste of the mud. This vodka is going all over the place. Let me tell you, that was a party in that town. Boy, the cows and horses were drunk. And then he said, you know, the whole town is dancing. We lost all our pranasi. He says, you do a mitzvah, you've got to do it with simcha. So he hired a band to play. Meanwhile, the pirates are sitting down to his afternoon fiesta or something, and he goes, what's that smoke? And he goes over, and he sees all his distilleries are burning, and the Yid is standing there with a klezmer band dancing, and I don't want to tell you that Pirates was not a happy camper. And he sent him out of there very quickly, flying. So they said that he wandered about, and he said to his wife, Now, Iker, Kayach now is to be the Simcha. And the other story they say about him is that once they told him that his brother uh, had died, an older brother who didn't have children, and he wanted to perform the mitzvah of Chalitza. And he had no money, and he traveled and traveled in the freezing snow, and he fell into a pit, and he fell deep into the pit. And he was falling asleep. It's not good to fall asleep in the snow. It's like the last Kriya Shmalamit. And he had a dream. His father came to him in a dream and said, you must enavish yourself on two mitzvahs, on chametz and on, uh, and on this chalitza. Therefore, so you're going to have a son that's going to bring simcha to the world. And you're going to survive this. And his son was born uh, that year, Chaim of Chernovich. It's Levracha. When the Romanians came in, they were really looking to kill him at that point. And he, he was in the Bermaim Chaim's base Medrash in Chernovich, in Romania, and he hid in the Bermaim Chaim Stender. And they, they ransacked the entire place. They smashed the walls down, crashed everything. He just didn't look in the Stender. And he was holding on to the safe of Bermaim Chaim. And he always attributed his, uh, that he survived uh, because of the Bermaim Chaim. And he kept it with him, made a big thing on the Bermaim Chaim's yard site. So I'm saying like this Rabbi Sai, don't burn down your distilleries. But at least sometimes when, when life seems to be burning around us, and things that we hope for are falling apart. Those are our moments. Those are our moments of being kind to of something. Says this Vasemis. Where, where we start, we say, Why do we say that? That's so not nice. Imagine a bathroom getting up by the wedding. I want to tell you the Zayda of the Chassan was such a myridika, big Ivra It was unbelievable. Well, why do we have to say it? So wh- why do we start? Why don't we start the Agada with Yitzhiya Mitzrayim? Why do you have to mention that part? You're not going to mention and I says, you know, by a chuppah, your zaydas and babas come down. I says, look, the zayr. So remember this uh, guy standing by a wedding, and he's saying, you know, it's about the chuppah. They say the grandfathers and grandmothers come down. The guy goes, hold on to your wallet. I knew this guy's grandfather. You know what I mean? Look out. 
He's coming around. You don't have to mention it, you know. Mitchilla Oivda Vaid Zara. Hatam Kikosha Mahashvach. What's the Shvach of Adam Ayinu? Why do we have to say that? Vlama Hoy is Estes is Fasemish, Ni of Adam Lapara. Vidaya Gula, why not talk about Gula? Why didn't Hashem start with Gula? Sakana Avdis. Lazois Misapra. Therefore, we're, we're, we have a duty to explain this in the night of the Seder. Shagam Shazesha Yini of Adam Hoyalitoiva. The holy yini of Adam was letoyvah shenuchel l'skarav l'shem izbarach. Sometimes you can only learn the mishnayos. You have to drag in the boxes when you're in a rotten, scary, not in a good mood. K'mar shekasa mitchilo oivdi by the zara hayavisein. Whatever it took for klal yisrael to become a klal yisrael, it could have not been if they weren't oivdi by the zara to start with. You have to rise up from the ashes. The Yaakov ubana of yardu mitzrayma shebalavze. If not for that, lo yino yichayl l'skarav l'makim baruch. It would have never happened. The, the avoid the that the Yidden went to. In other words, the lack of God. Where are you? All these years of bondage and death, and it could have never happened. If they hadn't gone through that period, we'd have never been Klal Yisrael. Sefer of Vedas Yisrael says, one is never allowed to say, I don't know, forget it. After what I did, no way. And God ain't looking at me. He's not talking to me. That's how we start the Agadah. Have you ever served the Zara? Probably not. That's probably one of them you never did. Unless you went off to India and bowed down to a cow or something. You probably didn't do that, right? So just telling you that the people did worse things than you, and guess what? Klal Yisrael was born out of that. So keep going. There's a great story. Melech Biederman says the story. It's such a beautiful story. He says, uh, this, this man yells at his son. You're sitting in Yeshiva, you're wasting your time. Why don't you get a job? Go out and work. I said, What's Dad, just leave me alone. The mother has Rahman on him. She borrows 200 uh, rubles a shekel or whatever, from an uncle, and says, tell your father you work today. At the end of the day, he comes in, he tells, pa, today I work. Here's the 200 shekel. His father rips up the money. Liar! Walks out, because I think dad is Ruch HaKadosh. Nah. Probably saw you wandering on the street. Do me a favor. Stay undercover, okay? Next day, she borrows another 200 shekel and uh, makes it to his father. Dad, this is hard work today. Rips it up. Liar! He goes, how do you know? Probably sees you with clean clothes if you were working. You'd have dirty clothes. Do me a favor. Today, go out there and really work. So you never, he works. He gets his job. He schleps. He comes to his father with the 200 shekel. His father's about to rip it. He goes, Dad, no, I worked so hard on that. He goes, today you worked. <laughs> today you worked. Okay? He said, you know, in order, to, to have, in order for us to be who are be, we have to go through something. So you're going to say, okay, Hashem, we have to go through. But so bad, so hard. So difficult! Hey, if we would understand how transient this world is, how quickly it's kechaloyim yoyef, and what oilam hab is, we're going to look back and say, that was it? That was it? And for that I'm in forever? Because I went through a difficult time? I'm done to where I am? I can keep going? Says the Svasem Esvaiter, Baruch Shoymer Haftochase, Gebench is Hashem who guards his Haftochas, Shachadosh Baruch Hu Chishev HaKetz, Lasses, what was the purpose of Galus? It should be Hachana Lachal Hastares and Mitzarim. For all Hastares and Mitzarim. She Yesh Lachal Yisrael. Now, the Swasemis works with this constantly. He says that the Galus Mitzrayim and in the individual Galus, your individual problem and pains and difficulties are, are directly connected. And the more you engage in the Inyan of Yitzhak Mitzrayim, the more you have freedom of what you're doing. And the pain that Kalal Yisrael had to go through in Mitzrayim had to be there for you to be able to get out of your pain. The Kedushas Levi says an amazing thing. What does it mean in Kaddish Baruch Hu Chishev Esekets? Shem made a deal, okay? Shem told the Sultan 400 years of Golis. After 210 years, Hashem says, early retirement. You're out of here. The Sultan comes running and says, that's not fair. You told me 400 years. So it says the Kaddish Baruch Hu Chishev Esekets. What does that mean? Hashem said to the Avais, uh, your children are going to be Avodim and Mitzrayim. They're going to suffer pain and death and horror and humiliation and lack of hope. Struggled with the Ramuna for 400 years. And all the others said, Our children, 400 years, oh no! So Hashem took that tsar and deducted 190 years. Hashem took the tsar that the others had. And that's what it means, says the Kedush Levi, Kedush Baruch Hu Chishev Esaketz. Kedush Baruch Hu took, took into account what they thought about how long it's going to take. I once said it to a father, 
You know, there was somebody who wasn't well. He said, well, we, my kids are going to find out about this, the pain they're going to have. I said, you don't understand. The, you're worrying about the pain of your kids. That takes off from the Yisurim. That's part of it. Chishev is a kates. That's what it is. We don't know that about Hashem's Cheshbain. So a friend of mine had this thing happen to him. It was Friday. Uh, it was a three-day Yom Tiv. And Friday afternoon, his son had a, like a semi-seizure or something. I don't know. It, was, it turned out it wasn't, really, wasn't nothing. Whatever it was. And they rushed him to, to a hospital, a hospital in Manhattan. And they took tests. And they said, look, we don't see anything wrong. He said, we'll get the test results. We're going to do deeper studies. We won't go home. We know it's Pesach. If there's an emergency, we'll call you. It was Thursday, Friday, Shabbos. Thursday was the first day of Pesach. So this was Wednesday. So this was Wednesday. Right? So he goes home. And the night of the Seder, the phone rings. And they told him, even if we call you, it's no emergency, you have to call us back during the holiday. Just could be we found something in your son's brain that we have to discuss. Thursday night he gets a call, that we're calling from such and this, this and this hospital. No emergency, but please call us back at your earliest convenience. He thought he was going through this thing. He ran to a Rav, the Rav said, they said there's no emergency. Could have got a Gentile to call back, you know, one who, they told him, okay, if it's driving you so crazy, then do it. He said, yeah, but maybe, the, maybe the, the Shem doesn't want me to do that. He was like stuck in a Three-day Yom Tev, every single day the hospital called. No, you don't have to call us back, but when you call. And finally, Matzah Yom Tev, he's going out of his mind, they're not in now. I don't know, we don't know who called you. Sunday, they're not in. Monday morning, four days. Monday morning, finally the phone rings, it's the hospital, he runs, him and his wife, they trip over each other, he picks up, yes, yes, what is it? You've been calling every single day. Oh no, we're calling to tell you that you can get free vouchers for parking, it's just a service. It was a, they were calling you once a day. So he didn't know whether to laugh or cry. So he ran to his Rav. He said, why did God do this to me? So the Rav said, you could, you could say God really got even with you, huh? Or you can say, maybe, just maybe, what had to be chas v'shalom was, they should call with some terrible news about your son's brain. Hashem switched it for this. So he went through the Shrek. Now, could we understand that what if chas v'shalom somebody does have bad news? Whatever it is, what Hashem does is rachman. It's always, it's always because this is the best situation. If, if we can learn to live this way. So you can find a personal cheirus. Says the Svas Emes. Ubegu'ulas Mitzrayim. Also Hashem is brachli as keitz l'chala shibudim. Whatever it takes, whatever pain you have to go through to reach an early keitz, that's the, the, the makar of the ge'ula. And that's the v'hisha amda pirish ha'golis v'ha'ge'ula. In other words, the reason we're still around is because Hashem imbued in our DNA that whatever suffering we have to go through to reach Geula is there and with an ability to reach Geula where we can still handle Geula. And that's what a person has to think. Let me understand that my difficulties are to bring Geula. The morale says, why is it called Seder? Because it's Masader the entire year. It organizes the entire year. What does it mean it organizes the entire year? What does organizing the entire year mean? So Rav Moshe says, It says, Right? right? Chad Amr, one man Amr says he was really a new king. One says, no, he was the same old king. He just decided he doesn't know Yosef, who saved his life. So Rav Moshe says, If he's a brand new king, or he was a king that really knew Yosef, but made believe like he doesn't know Yosef, he says, we have to know what to be mispal for. The Machlaikas in Rav Shmuel was, it could, have, it could have a person that saved your life, saved the whole country, like Yosef did, made you the richest king in the world, could you be so mean to take his children and, 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 and shech them and toivel yourself in their blood? Could such a thing be that it's the same king? That's the machloik as if it can be so bad. Nafkim in the is if it could be so bad, you've got to daven not to become such a person. Because if there is such a bad mead in the world, chas shalom it can happen. You know the story the person said, kishi uh, Shibud. So, yeah, right? Made it instead of 400 years, it was 210 years. So the story goes... And this guy's his 25th wedding anniversary, and he gets up and says, Lekavit, my 50th anniversary. They go, no, 25. He says, Kishri HaShibud. It's like, it's as if it's 50. But that's the Yisoy that the Svasem says. says, Asam Gevulech Shalom, Chaylev Chitim Yazbiyach. Literal explanation. Asam Hashem presents Gevulech, your boundary, Shalom, peace. Chaylev Chitim Yazbiyach. Says the Chsam Soifer. There's different tracks of Shemayim. There's a track of Parnassah. Let's say in the track of Parnassah, there's no Parnassah for you. But let's say you could have Shalom Bayis. 
So what happens? Shem gives you a very demanding wife. In order to have Shalom bias, you have to have more money. Shem says, it's for you to have Shalom bias, so I'll give you the money. And you're going, imagine, whatever money I have, I have to give them. No, you don't understand. The only reason you have money is because you have such a demanding wife. You have to have a Shalom bias in something, because that's your whole Makar for Panasa. So sometimes has some Gevulech Shalom, because you need Shalom, therefore, Chaylev Chetem Yasbiach. Very often, we don't understand it. But the problem that we have is the only reason for our brach. If not for that, there, there couldn't be one. So he says an interesting shail in the Sefer Acha Sha'alti. We've got to do at least one a week, right? This fellow says he's in Amman, Jordan. And he has the Jordanian currency. I think they had, it's called a dinner. Like in the Gemara, like in Iraq, it's still called a dinner. So he said he has like a thousand dinner bill, or something, I don't know, a hundred dollar dinner bill or something. And he, it starts blowing away in the wind. And he runs after it. And he tries to catch it. So he like reaches his foot and steps on it in order to catch it. Like to stop it from blowing away. And all of a sudden this policeman cuffs him. Uh-huh. Thousand ruble fine to the policeman. You're not you're getting arrested. He goes, What I do? He says, you stepped on the king? On the on the dinner is a picture of the king. You stepped on our king? He says, I tried to catch the money. You stepped on our king. You better give this guy a thousand dollars. Who knows what's happened, right? So it cost him a thousand uh, dinner and whatever dinner's worth. He says that later he's back in Essie's row. He's learning Daffy Yami, so he makes copies of the Gemara. And he's sitting on a park bench and it flies away in the wind and it's going toward a water and he's trying to catch it. And he was about to put his foot down to catch it. And he said, wait a second. If it was a thousand dinner to step on King Hussein, like, you know, how much does it cost? I'm not stepping on the Gemara. So he let the Gemara fly into the water. So is that better? So he asks him, what should he have done? So he told him, what you should have done, if that was the only way to save the Gemara, you should have put your foot on the Gemara. He brings a Rai, it says you're allowed to put a Sefer Torah on the, on the Chamar, even in a disrespectful way, if it's the only way to save it. Now, there was a big machloikas amongst the Chazal, if you had, uh, if you put different Torah into newspapers. If you put different Torah into newspapers, it winds up in someone's garbage, right? A friend of mine, his picture was in the paper, whatever, he was a, donated money for a building. So I said to him, how does it feel to have your picture in the paper? He said, I'll tell you what my wife said. Tomorrow you'll be lying in a thousand garbage cans. You know what I mean? So Chazal said, Really, the, the Rabbonim, when they put out the, the first time idea, they said, based on this Chazal, you're allowed to put a Sefer Torah on, on a donkey. He said, the Torah is willing to be mevaz itself for people to learn it. There's a lacha, you're allowed to be a mahara with the Torah in a basic kisei, if you feel that's the only way to stop you from bad machshavis. And the mashal is b'chaloisam, that the melech jumps into a tannery to save the kala. The Torah is willing to go down to us to, to be able to save us. But we have to, we have to say, we have to say, if the Torah is willing to do that for us, to go deep. So what excuse do we have that we're in the mud when the Torah says, I'm willing to go into the mud to pick you up? You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.